Survivor's ready. Go! Trap is spoken. Boston Rob and Amber are gonna do it. This is a, a business trip, as I like to say. You, Brad Culpepper. I'm tired of you and the fucking chickens. You can call me the puppet master. They're gonna be my little puppets. It's not like you're making me feel the devil here. You get to milk your own milk, I guess. Who the hell bought it for me? Chicken. Damn! We got enough rocks here, too. We could build a pretty decent shelter just using rocks. I'm supposed to talk glamour to you. <laughs> Direct from Hobart, it's time for the only Survivor podcast in Australia dedicated to Survivor. Bringing you all the latest interviews, episodes, and opinions from the greatest reality show on the planet. It's Survivor Oz, and here's your host, Ben Waterworth. It is Survivor Oz, Australia's number one TV and film podcast, coming to you once again for a Survivor Cambodia episode recap, the penultimate episode recap of the season. I say this every single season at this point, but it has just gone by so quickly, and we are only days away from the finale and knowing who has won the 31st season of Survivor. And uh, it is a pleasure to welcome back somebody to this show who knows all about this part of the game, knowing about uh, waiting nervously, finding out whether or not she would be declared the winner of Survivor or perhaps not. And in her case, she did get declared the winner of Survivor from the 25th season of Survivor Philippines. Please welcome back to Survivor Oz, the one, the only, Miss Denise Stapley. Denise, welcome back to the show. Hey, Ben. It's awesome to be back. Thank you so much. It's a great pleasure to have you back here, Denise, because it, it seems to be sort of every season we're like, yes, we'll get Denise on and we're kind of, we're all trying to work it out. And sadly, we can never kind of work it out um, to get you back on. But it's, it's worked this time. And I think it's the perfect time for it to work out, specifically because of what happened in this week's episode. It's, it's almost like we planned this deliberately, but we I had no idea who was going home this week before this season started. So it just worked out perfectly. Definitely. It's kind of luck of the draw, just like the game to some extent. So, yeah, I couldn't agree more. It's, it's a perfect week to be able to finally catch up and talk, and so I'm glad our schedule's finally synced up. So, ready to dive into this. Well, how have you been finding this season so far? It's kind of, we always like to get general vibes of uh, people's thoughts on the seasons. Have, have you been enjoying this season? Oh, my gosh, absolutely. I think this is one of those seasons, you know, I've really... You know, when there are returning players, I have loved watching this probably more than any other season that's had returning players on it. But it's also been, and I don't know about for you or for other fans, but it's also been a season, though, when I have had a hard time just keeping the pieces together and trying to follow, you know, where alliances are. And, you know, and we, we see more of that that's going to keep unfolding, you know, even into the finale. So I think it's been great because it's kept me on my toes and, you know, it just makes me realize the level of strategy, you know, that some players can just go to. That's just, it's it's intense at this point in the game. Well, we were trying to work out the other night, sort of on our recap episode, when we had a season when, particularly coming into the finale, when it might be almost questionable who, who's going to win. Like, there's generally one or two clear-cut people who you assume are going to win with a few maybes, but it kind of seems very open this season. And as you were saying, it's been very unpredictable. And I kind of put it out there, I thought your season was slightly like that. I thought coming into the finale, um, there were a couple people there that could have won it. A lot of people said Nicaragua maybe might have been the last one. But do you feel kind of your season might have been really the last unpredictable finale heading into it? You know, I do think so, and, you know, I'm trying to think, you know, and, and the seasons start to kind of blur, and, you know, but, you you, you know, you go back to Kagiyan, and, and that was very clear-cut, at least, you know, from sitting on my couch, you know, that was absolutely clear-cut, um, you know, in other seasons, but, you know, it, going back to ours, you know, definitely was one of the ones where, you know, you, you don't necessarily, you know, you don't, there could have been multiple things, but this season, again, though, there are just multiple people that could easily when you know they could easily win it at the end mm. absolutely if they're sitting in that final three or two or whatever it might be and it's definitely the uh the words of this season has been voting blocks and i think we've kind of seen it again sort of this week and we're going to pop looks like preview wise next uh, for the finale we're going to see that as well it kind of seems to be something that they're talking up as something that's never really happened before but we had an article that recently came up that voting blocks has been something that's uh, you know often happened in survivor were there kind of these elements of voting blocks in your season that perhaps we didn't really get to see a whole lot of on our tv screens See, I do think, you know, when we've heard that term voting blocks, I guess it just doesn't seem that unique to me. It seems like every season is about voting blocks. 
because it's about those alliances, but it just happens to be that these voting blocks shift each week. You know, that every season is about voting blocks, that you always need to be on the side of that that majority to stay in it, because, again, you got to be in it to win it. So it doesn't, just that concept of the block doesn't seem that unique, but definitely in ours, you know, you can look at once, you know, coming into the merge, it's, you know, definitely I need to be on the side of that Tandang voting block because they had the block, you know, coming in at that merge. And so you do see flavors of that or similarities in that from my season to, you know, this season and probably, you know, many seasons, but you just see it shifting so much more this season. And what really seems to be the case this season with that is that, and maybe this is what makes it unique, is that you kind of have a vote. Somebody gets taken out. They go against sort of somebody else's alliance. They blindside their alliance or their voting blocks. But it doesn't seem to be kind of that animosity held against it. Like we've seen Tasha this season say, you know, oh, you fooled me once, you won't fool me again. But then she seems to be fooled again and then she'll still go back to, say, a Jeremy or something like that. It just, it seems to be that not many people are holding these sort of grudges, perhaps maybe particular... Uh, one person who we'll talk about very soon who got voted out this episode. But it just seems this season people seem to forgive and forget quite quickly and just play the game, so to speak. You know, I think you're absolutely right. A- absolutely. Because that's true. And just about every other season that we watch, it's just that bitterness that comes out, you know, that betrayal, because those loyalty bonds are broken. But you're right. It's much more fluid this season. And it's fluid with everybody kind of understanding, you know, hey, it it is, it's all about the numbers and where are you going to fall? And people, I think, are so, you know, and I think there's something about, you know, how desperately they want to get to the end. You know, they have something, you know, that they they have unfinished business that they want to get to that end. And being able to, you know, come into the game and play a much more fluid game and know, hey, it doesn't matter if you turned on me the last time. If you're willing to be a number for me this time, you're valuable. So I think you're you're right. You're spot on on that, Ben. And do you, do you think that that's going to potentially lead for an exciting uh, vote? Because we haven't had a close vote really in Survivor since Nicaragua, and that was decided by one vote. Every other season since, it's almost been a blowout. Not necessarily a blowout as such, but it's not been close. And given that we might have this kind of no bitterness, so to speak, from the jury, that maybe it's going to lead to people really bringing a close vote, particularly with some of these people which we'll talk about who's left. I mean, we have potentials for close votes if we say get a final three of a of a Spencer a, a Jeremy and a Kelly or a Tasha like I mean there's all of these potentials so we could have that close vote finally I think definitely and because each of those if you're thinking of you know Jeremy and Kelly and Spencer especially those three you know their stories aren't that unique from each other so it makes it even harder in that final vote you know what's going to make one stand out over the other so I think you're right you could see the votes spread across them a little bit more evenly versus, unfortunately, you know, not digging on Abby, but if Abby would would have stayed in the game, you know, we'd see that spread again, again, you know, much greater, you know, that discrepancy would have been, you know, much different at the end. So I, I think you're right. Going into it could be a close vote. Well, I'd love to see a close vote. I mean, from a fan's perspective, we want to see that. I know, obviously, from your perspective, Denise, particularly in your season, you probably didn't want a close vote. You just wanted to win, so um, it's kind of... Of course. <laughs> I don't want a close vote. I want... You want to take it home. But, yes. no, you're right. From a viewer's perspective, though, you do. It's much more exciting, right? Mm, yeah, and it's, it's interesting because... Um, sort of saying before going into the finale, how you kind of think, oh, yeah, there's maybe two people that can do this. And so particularly last season, you know, I was very much thinking that Carolyn had a fantastic shot at winning the game and, you know, Mike versus Carolyn, and this is going to be a super close vote and it was anything but. So I don't know if that's just my prediction skills there, Denise, or it's just um, I'm not watching the, the season properly. <laughs> well, no, and I think, you know, when you're thinking, you're thinking of their gameplay, but we have to, you're thinking... You know, and this season, I think it's going to come down to it. Also, we have to be able to look at, you know, who's sitting in that, fi- you know, in that finale, and not just from a strategic point of view, but again from that social point of view. And it's a blend of that, I think. And these players, you know, coming out, you know, it's like if if Joe had been sitting in, or you know, as we get into talking tonight, you know, if Keith was sitting in that final three, you know, or what, you know, because it could happen. You know, they, I think these are players that are really going to be looking for, you know, a player who has more of a balance to all of those traits, you know, the outwit, outplay, outlast. 
And, yeah, I think, and even, you know, looking back in past seasons, when you think something might be close, there's one of those things that must be missing. Mm. And that's what makes it that blowout. Yeah, definitely. And it's kind of learned a little bit, I think, through the Worlds Apart interview, sort of with Carol and Mm -hmm. the perception of, say, of her was sort of not necessarily what we, say, saw on screen. And then it was kind of someone like a Sierra, who we never got to see at all, that she constantly talked up as somebody who would have won had she made it to the end. And it was kind of like this season, like, you know, Kelly Wigglesworth, we love Kelly. We never got to see Kelly, literally. But um, kind of from the talks that you hear about the vote out for her and everything was that she was a very well-respected, very well-liked person. So, as you were saying, the social element, and that might play in the part of Keith, but then you look at, say, what we're seeing and can you make an argument for Keith winning this game based on the edit he's getting? You know, it's kind of like it's all these analysing bits that you've got to try and look at heading into the finale. Exactly, and it can drive you crazy, trying, especially this season. Mm. You know, I've stopped even guessing who I think is going to be there because, <laughs> you know, it's, well, I, I guess it will be tonight, but, you know, it's like you could have this diagram that's constantly moving, and you're right, you know, based on those predictions. Do you do you like this going into the final, having six people left? Because I'll, I'll ask you, of course, in this episode what you think this big twist will be that's never happened in 31 seasons. But if we, if we kind of just assume it's going to be a standard final three, then we're going to have to have three tribal councils before we get to the final tribal council. So we're going to have a very action-packed uh, episode, so to speak. Compare that way back into season two with the Australian Outback where we had a two-hour episode with only three people left, and that was a final two. So... So, uh, I mean, do you like a final six or is that too many people, do you think? Well, I like it because I, I think I like it just from the standpoint of I don't know what's going to happen. So I think that's why I like it because I don't know. Are we going to have three tribal councils? Could there be a tribal council where there's a double vote out? You know, could you know how can those idols maybe still come into play? I mean, we really don't know you know, what we're going to have. You know, I highly doubt, and I know, you know, I've heard word and heard rumor, you know, talk of, you know, could there be a final four? I just don't see it. I I really, you know, I'd be shocked, but again, I don't know. I would be shocked, though, if Survivor went to a final four. So it's kind of like throwing that off, you know, off the table, you know, what's going to happen with that final six? So I think I do like it just from the standpoint of it's different. And, you know, they do such a great job. You know, CBS, it is, you know, I've said it so many times, it is, It's an art and a science. They know exactly what they're doing. They know what they're doing, you know, to make the storyline play out in in a way that we will be, you know, that will hopefully end the season, you know, satisfied. And I have no doubt that whatever the twist is, it's going to be good. And that's what I think one thing about the editing, which has been good this season, well, for the most part, we have sort of some people have been forgotten about. But I think kind of as we were saying, going into this episode with, you know, so many people that potentially could win it. I'm saying there's probably four people, in my opinion, that could win this game based on what we've seen. And it's, again, rare that we get that. And the editing has been fairly strong, I think, that you could argue clear cut for a few of these people that they've had that, quote, winner's edit um, yep. and only a couple that really, if they won, it would be a shock because of their edit, you know, solely, not necessarily on their gameplay. Definitely. I think, I mean, you, and, you know, and I don't know if they're the same ones for you, but, you know, I look at, you know, Jeremy and Spencer and, you know, Wentworth, and, you know, they've got clear edits that, you mm-hmm. know, can show, you know, a great um, narrative and a great storyline, you know, that they could be sitting in that final three in and, you know, or could win it, and we would clearly, you know, that would make sense for us. You know, a couple, you know, it's definitely difficult with Keith. You know, even with Tasha or with Kimmy, it's harder for me to see their edit as being a winner's edit. Um, but they've definitely been significant in the game in their own way. Yeah, well, it's definitely... I sort of have Tash kind of loosely on that fourth spot there because I can see elements. But it's, I think, kind of in this episode this week, she was very volatile and kind of just the way she sort of react. I don't know if that's just kind of getting to like day 35 now and you'd obviously know all about that when the emotions are starting to really come into it. So maybe she's just, you know, it's all getting to her. But I mean, outside of that, have you kind of been impressed from Tasha this season? Cause she's sort of her Kagayan game was, you know, good, but I guess kind of looking at this one, do you think based off that, has she improved and have you been impressed with some of the game at least? You know, it's so strange, Ben. Tasha is one of those players I don't have a really good read on. I just don't. And I don't know if that's how players feel similarly in the game. I think from a challenge point of view, she does great. Um, You know, she's definitely shown that she can, you know, uh, other than last week, you know, and that's fatigue and exhaustion. Um, You know, from a social point of view, 
in the game. I'm not sure about her game. I think that's one of her blind spots um, that as a viewer, as a fan, you know, usually sitting on my couch, I can feel kind of like, and it sounds strange, but I feel like, you know, you get to know players through the game. And you can kind of either identify with them or you can connect with them and you can kind of see them in kind of this real sense of who they are. And for me, Tasha, just there's, there's kind of this disconnect for me with Tasha. And so it makes it hard for me to read how she's doing in the game. So her game feels similar to me than her last game. She's just gotten to do more of it. And she's had people who have been willing this season to play with her other than, you know, other than like when she was playing in, in Kagyan, where she felt like she just didn't have a, a tribe that was ready to play strategically. So I think definitely she has. She's definitely making blunders here at the end that I'm quite familiar with, like with Abby or, you know, some of those pieces, um, you know. So I, I don't know. I'm mixed on it. Mm. She, she's interesting. I remember when I rewatched Kagan, it was kind of, I sort of had this very, you know, like, oh, you know, Tash played a great game. She was fantastic. And then you kind of rewatched it and you're like, maybe it wasn't as impressive as I thought. And it's not to say that she played a bad game or anything, but um, yeah. No, no. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's been interesting, I think. But I, I think kind of, it's been good, as you kind of said, what we've seen with her. And I, we've obviously got to see a lot more of her because I think, um, yeah, on a rewatch, you don't get to see as much of her as I think you probably think you did in Kagayan. But, you know, and, right. I, and I know she's she's got a fairly strong fan base out there. But on the flip side of that, I also know there's a few people out there who are a bit sort of indifferent on her as well. So it's kind of going to be interesting to see how she plays out in this, this final episode. Well, and I think, and, and again, that's one of those things that because we're not, obviously we're not there with them, we don't know how the rest of the people on the jury fully are feeling. You know, if, if you watch the Ponderosa videos, we, we hear clearly, you know, Cass's feelings on, on Tasha. And, that, you know, and, and so going into the finale, you know, if by chance, if she makes it to that, that you know, the, whatever the fi- you know, final two, final three, whatever that is, you know, you just don't know how other people have felt connected with her or how they will look at her game. You know, clearly, it doesn't necessarily matter. You know, I can can say from my own season, you know, it, even though, you know, Cass may dislike Tasha, it doesn't mean she won't get her vote if she's sitting there. You know, clearly, Abby did not love me and was willing to give me her vote in, in the finals. So it, it definitely will be very interesting to see how it plays out. It's going to be interesting to see, too, the likes of Keith and, and Kimmy because, um you know, their, their edit, I guess, as we said, hasn't really been super strong enough to argue them for a win. I mean, Kimmy has... I think Kimmy's impressed me because she's she's had a couple of good episodes where she's really showed strategy. And I think kind of a lot of people went into this, you know, assuming Kimmy's just going to be that, you know, one screaming about the chickens and not eating the brain and being loud and kind of that. But she's, she's done very well, I think, this season. I mean, do you feel had Kimmy's edit been a bit stronger, we could be talking about her as a win? Or, I mean, is she like a very, very, very slim chance of winning this season? No, you know, I don't rule any of them out because it depends on who she's sitting in the end with. But Kimmy, definitely, you know, we've heard, you know, even just, you know, kind of this concept of the All Girls Alliance. You know, Kimmy has been thinking, you know, I can, some of her gameplay resonates with me. It's, it's, she just needs three more days. She needs time to maneuver and switch. And, you know, she'll go, you know, and, and she'd like to stay loyal with the group that she's got, but she's not unwilling to flip or to switch, and she can make a good story out of that. You know, clearly from her first, you know, from her first season, she's, I mean, she has that comparison to be able to plead to the jury. So, no, I, I definitely don't rule Kimmy out. I don't put her as my, my number one. It really, I think, depends for her on who she's sitting with. You know, I think she would have to be, in, in my honest opinion, I think she would have to be sitting with Keith and with Tasha to have a chance. Hmm. and then she's going to have to really make a, a much better plea over Tasha's gameplay, you know, to win that. But again, that social, you know, those social relationships in the game could come into that and, and play a factor also. And for the nostalgia factor, I think, Denise, like as, as fans, just like this, this amazing sight of seeing Kimmy Kappenberg win Survivor, you know, <laughs> 29 seasons exactly. later, how good would that be? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, that's why, I mean, you think of, why fans voted, you know, her in in the first place. And it's just like Wigglesworth, you know, Mm -hmm. there is that nostalgia piece. And, you know, we like to see, you know, players come back and, you know, do well. And, you know, there's a reason why we voted every single one of those players in. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't just one person making that choice. It was, you know, thousands across America. So... 
Yeah, definitely. With Keith, um, I, I, I kind of am likening Keith now to a Big Tom. I think that, you know, he's second time around, made it very deep into the game, just like Big Tom did on both his seasons. He's kind of seen this real aloof character, but I think he's underrated a little bit that he gets so far and always potentially has that chance to win. He's kind of overlooked right into the end. I mean, what, what's your take on how Keith plays a game of Survivor? And if you're out there on a season with someone like Keith, you know, are, are you going to kind of overlook him as just kind of like this goofy guy and then you sort of get to the end and you're like, well, hang on a minute, he's actually a threat, he could win this game. Yeah, you know, no, absolutely. I think that it would be so easy to overlook him because of that missing strategy piece. You just don't, you know, again, from home, I don't look at Keith, I don't experience Keith as this threat, like in terms of a final jury speech. You know, I... I think I tend to be pretty good with my words, and we saw, you know, last, you know, this last week, in this last episode, Keith can kind of stumble in some moments over kind of explaining why he did what he did, and so I think it would be incredibly easy um, to, you know, to to miss that, and you know, to not see this threat, and yeah, before you know it, he's this dark horse coming up, you know, and there somehow. You know, he pulls a good jury speech out, and he takes it all. Hmm. So, no, definitely, I think that would that would have been, and Keith would have been somebody that, you know, clearly in the game, I would have loved to have played with. You know, he's got this great attitude, so he's somebody, you know, you can enjoy spending time with. And, you know, when you're out there and in the conditions that they're clearly in, you know, just having a personality like Keith, that's a valuable commodity. Yeah, definitely. And what, what's really been great this season to watch too is the fact that we're going into this final six. All three Samoan Del Sur returnees are there. They're all original Hanapu members as well, as we heard Jeremy say in this episode. And um, we actually spoke to Reed the other day, of course, started on the same tribe as them. And this is just like an amazing thing to see these three original tribe members from one season have made it this far. So I don't know, did you were you a particular fan of that season at all, Denise? Has it kind of surprised you to see that these three people from one season have made it this deep? And without really, I guess, working with each other, so to speak, as well. Yeah, you know, I'm not necessarily surprised to see them having made it this far. Um, it, it's fun. It's kind of a fun little kind of anecdote, you know, of the season to, you know, to look at that. You know, just like you could look at, you know, Tasha and Spencer, mm-hmm. you know, as having made it as far as they did in, in the original tribes that they were on. So I think it's a, you know, it's a fun little kind of tidbit. You know, in terms of their season, it wasn't quite honestly one of my favorite seasons for a variety of reasons. I enjoyed them on it. Um, I just didn't dig the season that much. Um, but, you know, again, there's never a horrible season. Um, but, no, it would be, again, it would be fun to see, you know, you know, three, you know, those three make it to the end, you know, those those original um, players. It's it's fun to see. Yeah, definitely. And out of sort of looking at them, we'll just go, I think kind of we've got the, the opportunity to go over some of the individual players into this finale, and we'll talk about some of them, obviously, on the episode as well, because there's obviously one certain person we need to uh, devote a bit of time to here, Denise. But um, looking at, say, uh, we'll go with Kelly, first of all. I mean, do you kind of liken her a bit to you because she's kind of always been kind of there working her way up and you know never sort of really being at the top of uh any vote she was there i think for one vote she really got a say there but she's kind of always been there fighting for her survival a little bit obviously you had to do that very much so throughout your game but what's been your take on kind of how she's um come along this time around and played survivor uh you know i wish i could completely liken my play to to Kelly's play. Um, I think the similarities, you know, in our gameplay may end right there, though, from the point of working our way up from the bottom, um, because you're right, she has, and she's been, she's been doing a fantastic job of that all the way, we can see it all the way back from, you know, when she started throwing, I think it was Terry under the bus. Mm-hmm. You know, she knew what she needed to do to make sure, you know, targets kind of shift off of her, or that she's, again, in those voting blocks. But, you know, I've got to hand it to Kelly. You know, she is an amazing player. And we just didn't, and again, we didn't get to see that in her at all in her season. You know, she was out way too soon. And so we're seeing she has this level of strategy um, and play in her that, you know, I would love to say that I had, but I didn't. And I don't know if that's because of the circumstances that I was in or if that's just because of the people that we are. But, no, she is She's got some some cojones on her, and she's playing a great game. I'm nervous because she was my preseason tip to win, and I've never correctly predicted a winner preseason, Denise. So um, this is the closest I've ever gotten. (laughs) 
So see, we don't, don't we don't want you to jinx it. You uh. know? So maybe this is going to be the year, man. Maybe this is it. You know? Maybe that 2015 is going to be the year you get it right. <laughs> yes. So you know, I don't think I've ever gotten it right. We've tried, you know, doing the you know pools here at our house, and mm-hmm. yeah, I've, I've never gotten it right. So yeah, you never know though. Yeah, I'm hoping you're right. Well, we we've done, done sort of a mini pool against uh, with some of the Oslets. The main one we do, we do like a sweep, so it's just all completely random. And I actually had Abby, and I was like rooting for the fact that if at least she made it to the final tribal council, I get like a little bit of money, even if she comes third. So I'm like, well, I've got you know thirty dollars. She's going to make it to the end and get no votes or whatever. So I was like, ah, damn it! Nice. There you go. Darn. <laughs> she just oh. got cut right towards the end. Um, Jeremy as well. I mean, the thing that kind of baffles me with Jeremy this season is I think he's been playing great, but no one's targeting him, Denise. Like, no one seems to bring up his name as somebody that we've got to get rid of and get him out of this game. I mean, is that just down to Jeremy's great gameplay or is maybe we're over, you know, hyping up Jeremy? Why is nobody targeting Jeremy? I think, you know, I think it has to be some of his gameplay. And I think, you know, it's, it's, if you compare he and Joe, you know, as these big targets when Joe was in the game, you know, the reality is also, you know, Jeremy hasn't been stellar at every single challenge. Hmm. So people don't get this vision of him as someone that we can never beat. So it's easy then to find another target or, or if someone is being, you know, more manipulative or, or swapping or switching, you know, he's been very loyal to his, his group, his core, um, you know, we saw kind of that loyalty come out when Steven was in the game and, and you know, him saving Steven. Um, so I think, you know, he's he's shown kind of this loyalty that may, you know, at least in that group, you know, people don't see him as a threat. And, you know, challenge-wise, he yeah, he doesn't take every challenge. So I think it's a combination of things. And I think he plays a, a good social game, too. I think he seems to be connecting with, you know, everyone out there, he's not offensive to people. He's not ticking people off, you know. So I think all of that helps people play, and it's not under the radar, but it helps them play a game that will get them to the end. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 been great to watch him, I think, this season because uh, I remember in someone else, uh, I thought him and Val were going to go all the way to the end and, and win it. And sort of yeah. once I lost Val, and then we kind of had Jeremy for a long time, and, you know, it sort of seemed once the whole Josh Jeremy thing happened, Josh was gone, Jeremy was going to win. And then, of course, we were blindsided as a viewer when he was taken out. So it's it's kind yeah. of been interesting with Kelly and Jeremy. As you were saying with Kelly, we didn't get to see a whole lot of her game in that season. And say with Jeremy, you would argue he was taken cut a little bit short because we thought he was going to go to the end. So we're, we're kind of seeing this now from both of them, and particularly with someone like Kelly, who a lot some people question why she got brought back on. But I, for one, was on that. Team Kelly train that said, look, she's got potential to be a great player. And with both of them, I think we're really seeing that now, aren't we? I think definitely. And, you know, and I, and I was probably one of those people initially when that cast came out that went really, but only because we hadn't seen it, but clearly again, CBS knows what they're doing and, you know, they, they knew that potential, you know, they, I think, you know, survivor and CBS, they know more about all of us than you could even imagine. And so they know the potential that we have out there or, you know, what kind of a player or what we might bring to the table in terms of, you know, a narrative or a storyline. So so I think it's been great to be able to see what we didn't get to see. And I, I'm, you know, definitely glad that they did bring her back. Mm, definitely. Uh, the last person there, obviously, Spencer, uh, the youngest person coming into this final six. And, uh, you know, similar to the first time he was on, kind of in this position. And But he's, he's I guess, this season around, he's, he's managed to be in the, uh, the majority in uh, a lot of these votes compared to last time when he was always just trying to save his skin. The, the real thing kind of going in with Spencer, of course, and uh, feel free to just discuss how you think he's going to go at the end in his game, but also uh the vote um actually no, i'll keep that separately because that's a separate conversation that will lead into abby just okay. spencer spencer in general kind of what's been your take on his his season and his chances i guess coming into the finale i have loved spencer's been one of my favorites all season long you know i think you know i have tweeted on occasion not not very much this season but you know i think i am a nerd girl at heart <laughs> and so i really you know had been rooting for steven and i've been rooting for Spencer, and, you know, with Spencer, you know, I've had the opportunity to meet him um, at one of the, the charity functions, and he's a great guy, you know, and, you know, very nice to talk to, and, you know, so to see him come back in this season and play, you know, both, you know, he came in, you know, no less strategic than he was the first time through, but to see his social game just evolve 
and very genuinely, like, I think he's done a fabulous job. And, you know, it, and so it has made him, you know, be able to adapt and maneuver a little bit better in the game. So, no, I, I love how he's playing, you know, and he, and it's not been a, you know, there's been no free lunch for him along, you know, this, you know, this time out. I mean, he still had to work hard and he's had some times when, you know, it's like the, you know, the, the wind is just knocked out of the sails and he's got to reconfigure and figure out what he's going to do. And, you know, I think he's had a pretty good um, head on his shoulders. I'm not sure, you know, in terms of this decision, what his plan's going to be going into the finale. You know, I'm, I'm a little bit nervous for him, again, if he stays in that finale with Wentworth and with Jeremy. You know, that's the least likely scenario, um, I think, that gets him the million dollars if, if there is one. You know, I think he's, but I think he's also, you know, thinking, you know, like a game of chess or, you know, he's, he's thinking one step ahead. And so I'm hoping he's already looking at who do I need to be sitting in that final, you know, in that, in that finale with to really, you know, clench, you know, cinch up that, that million dollars for himself. It's a very interesting decision with that vote because kind of, I can see the argument, the whole like, look, you want to get to the end and try and beat the best. But I also live by the yep. argument that you just want to get to the end and win. Like as we said with you before, Denise, like, you, I just, know. you just want to win, right? So like, if you're in his position, like you've got this opportunity to keep Abby in the game, who is just yeah, this massive goat, who generally everyone's going to beat at the end, or you take her out and you know take your chances up against people who you might not beat, as you were saying, if you get to a final three in that certain situation. D- do you honestly feel as, a, as the type of player you are, Denise, that you would have done the same thing, or would have you kept Abby and taken out Tasha? No, I know I would have blown my chance. I mean, I, I you know, I, I would love to be able to look back and say, no, I would have done the right thing you know, had it been my choice to keep Malcolm or Abby. But I know who I am. And at the time that I was out there, I couldn't tolerate having Abby in the game anymore. I couldn't bear the thought of sitting next to her in the finale. Not, you know, and, and I, think, I think I was. I think I kind of lost that strategic piece for a little bit and just thought, no, I couldn't, at that point in, the to- in time, I couldn't stand her. And so the thought of, you know, just taking her that far and rewarding her somehow um, just was too much. And so I would have much rather have gone to the game and lost to Malcolm, um, gone to the end of the game, yeah, and had him sitting next to me and, and likely lost. Um, and so I don't know. You know, in Spencer's position, you know, Tasha's making that kind of proposal of, you know, in the spirit of the game and out of the respect for the fans. Well, you know, I think, you know, that might plea to those guys and, and you know, to Jeremy's maybe ego or, or Spencer's ego. But if they can step back, you know, the reality is the fans voted all of them in, and the fans would like to see, you know, the, the most exciting ending to this game. And, you know, I, I don't know what that looks like, but, you know, I don't know. I don't know what I would do if I were Spencer. You know, I know in my gut, um, I think I know the type of person that I am, and sadly I'd probably want to go to the end of the game with people that I not only thought played a good game, but I had some respect for and I had a relationship with in the game. And uh, that probably wouldn't have been Abby. Well, it must have been so much fun for you watching this season because I know kind of in your interview with us, you know, we discussed Abby and sort of what's it like with her, but to kind of see these other players have to deal with Abby Marie Gomez, um, you know, and as you were saying, like, we were talking about this the other night, like, is it down to the fact you get to that certain point, like day 35, and it's just, even though there's only four more days to go, you just can't live with her any longer. She's got to go. Um, And... I could just imagine you've been smart, a bit of a smile on your face this season, Denise, with people having to deal with her. <laughs> you know, I think there have been pockets. It's, it's been an interesting season. You know, it, I have had those moments when I'm like, oh, there it is. There's, there's the Abby that I know and love. <laughs> um, but, you know, I even, you know, I had thought about writing a post on my Facebook, and I, and I didn't. I, I chose to, to save it all for you, Ben. Aww. But, you know, I thought, you know, I bet there are a lot of people out there that are thinking I'm at home cheering that Abby's out. And the reality is I'm not because I did see her game change this season, not to the extent that I think she wanted it to or that maybe she's capable of it changing, um, but I did see a little bit of a different Abby. I saw a, a slightly more filtered Abby in many moments um, and an Abby that, was, that had to be a little bit more strategic, but again, her perception of her role in the game is still a bit skewed. Um, and that's just, I think, hard for her. But it is difficult. And when you get down to, you know, those smaller numbers, 
you know, you need people that you can count on for consistency. And I, you know, when I look back to the Philippines, you know, at least in my mind, I believe my perception was that we, that Malcolm and I were in lockstep with Lisa and, and Scoopin. And Abby was volatile. You know, Abby, again, it's, you know, we've heard people say, if you look at her the wrong way, if she sees you walk off, you know, with someone else, it can just trigger that mistrust for her. And it's just not worth it at that point in the game. You know, it's, it's, she would be great to take to the end, but you have to be able to maneuver her all the way to the end and have her know that you are somehow loyal and trusting to her. And that just changes on a dime. Yeah. And it's just, it's fascinating. We were talking about this the other night, thinking that in her two seasons, she clearly seems to be just that obvious person that you take. Like there's just no question about it from a, from a viewer's perspective. Like as yep. you know, the Monday morning quarterback to steal a phrase that I've loved using on this show over the years, Denise, but um, it's, Yep. It's just, it's fascinating to think that someone like Abby has never made it to the end based purely on that. I mean, you know, you look at someone like a, a Philip Shepard and, you know, I'm not going to say that they're completely similar. There's different elements to both yeah. Abby and Philip, but there's elements that are very similar. And, you know, he at least made it to the end of one season, I guess, on the back with Boston Rob. But it's just interesting to think that, you know, she hasn't gotten to the end based purely on the fact that she is not going to get any votes. Right. Well, and I, exactly, and, and I think, you know, a difference with Philip, too, you know, as, as maybe, and again, having met Philip briefly, um, as, as, oh, it sounds horrible to say, as annoying or, you know, as much as Philip might drive people crazy, I think Philip's less volatile. Mm. You know, I think Philip would go with the plan. Philip's not going to, you know, Philip isn't going to just blow up at everybody, you know, I think you, you can you can kind of finesse Philip in a different in a way that you can't Abby, and I think that's what got him to the end. You know, not only he so he's a different kind of goat, um, but yeah, it's just it's just tough with Abby. And and again, you know, you're in those conditions and you're trying to think strategically, but you're you're also just thinking, oh my gosh, you know, you just don't want to have to deal with it. And unfortunately, I think that risk. You know, as Spencer said, you know. It'd be great to get to the end with her, but, you know, or to get to the end with a certain, you know, two other, you know, with Tasha and with Keith, or it wasn't Tasha and Keith, um, Wentworth and Keith, but you're counting on Abby to be consistent for you, and there's just no guarantee of that. Yeah, and I guess, kind of from your perspective, too, it's been good at least... Um for this season to have uh, obviously Philippines represented Philippines has made it quite far. So, you know, if you're representing your season out there too, Denise, it's, it's been obviously great to kind of have her go that far as well. Oh, definitely. And, you know, and, and I think, you know, and, and she, and again, I think she's played a better game, but it is, it's, it's fun to see somebody be able to go back out and, and do it again. And, you know, may not have gone quite as far, but, you know, to still, you know, go deep into the game. So and so now she'll play. She plays a significant role on the jury, and you know, so she still has power. Yeah. Were you were you disappointed that there weren't any other Philippines people there for people to vote for? I know I sort of. I think RC, I believe, turned the opportunity down again because we obviously know how close she got to being on Blood vs Water. But um, you know, would have you liked to see a couple more names on that list from your season? You know, no. I mean, there, there's not anyone that you know. Jonathan's played multiple times. Um, Malcolm's played multiple times. Mike's played multiple times. Um, you know, so of quite honestly, the people that I have close relationships with, um, no. You know, the only person I think for entertainment value um, that I would wouldn't have minded seeing, you know, would be Zane. Mm -hmm. You know, to to see Zane back out there and to see maybe if Zane came back in a little bit more prepared. Um, you know, he was definitely a fun guy to have out there, and you know, so kind of he's kind of a key. You know, you know, in in that way that I don't know, you know, how rational his strategy may have been, you know, as he went deeper into the game. We didn't get to see that with Zane, but but no, there's nobody else that you know. I think Jeff Kent to come back. I think he would be he would be actually interesting to see come back because you know he would bring back, you know, some strategy as well as you know, and he'd have to kind of finesse his his social game a little bit more. But you know, other than that, probably not. Hmm. It's interesting, kind of. Um, 
sort of looking at who was on the list. And, and obviously there was like a, another, I think, 12 people. There was originally, I think, 42 before they cut it down even more. But, um, yeah, it's, it's particularly with like RC. We, we, um, we had RC on, uh, during Sam Wondell. So actually with her dad, funnily enough, who obviously was meant to be on Blood vs. Water. And she kind of said, yeah. I think, to us in that interview that, yeah, she's kind of, you know, had that chance to come back. It didn't happen, sadly. So she's moved on. So it's, it's kind of interesting with that. I think if I was in RC's position, I would have jumped at the opportunity again. But I guess people, sort of have that and are different in those those moments. Yeah, I think, you know, the game leaves kind of an emotional mark on people in a different way. And, you know, the whole relationship and the dynamic between Abby and RC has been an interesting thing. You know, I think it's something that will probably never be patched up and it's left kind of a mark on RC and RC's got her own personality um, that, you know, that impacts that. Um, but, you know, for myself personally, regardless of my relationship with Abby, absolutely, if Abby's back out there again, let us go play. Who knows? Maybe Abby and I would be like the secret alliance. You just <laughs> never know. Um, I'd watch that. Be, okay, <laughs> that would be an interesting thing. Yes. But, you know, but I mean, but we really have, you know, Abby and I, you know, it, it's, you know, we are clearly, you know, similar in some ways and so very different in others. But, yeah, you know, so I, I don't know, you know, what RC's reasons are, you know, for, you know, whether or not it was, nope, having going, you know, having gone through it, it, it takes a lot. And I have no doubt that just getting that far with her dad and being out there and then having to get pulled from the game, you know, there's so much stress um, and anticipation that goes into just getting ready, hmm. you know, to go into the game. And then if you have any hesitation or, you know, the thought of going back with kind of her arch nemesis, you know, I, I can I can envision that, yeah, you know, you have to really decide, do I want to do this again? Yeah. You know, you're, you're giving up you know, a lot to go back out there. So. And, that, and that would have been a huge element, I think, probably to it. Because, I mean, if RC's out there, RC versus Abby, I mean, you know, that that's a storyline making in itself they want to put out there. So, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. There you go. Now, we'll get to some listening questions in our final few in just a second here, Denise. But just quickly, got to got to ask the uh, the big question. A lot of people have been asking this to us and uh, discussing this on online, Facebook, the forums, everything. This twist that Jeff Probst has teased in the in the preview for next week never happened before in 31 seasons of Survivor. What's your prediction here, Denise? What do you think is going to happen? Quite honestly, the only thing that I can think of that's going to happen is we're going to see both idols played in one tribal council by two different people. So, you know, we've seen it where I think it was uh, Parvati, you know, playing two idols, but they were both hers and played for two different people. But I think we could see, you know, Jeremy and Wentworth both play their idols. And then I'm not sure, you know, where, you know, how that's going to, you know, sift down, you know, with the votes, but... That's the only thing that I can imagine, that it's going to be something similar to that. Yeah. I think there's a lot of talk that, yeah, it's going to be they'll both play their idols and basically it will cancel out all the votes so that essentially nobody gets a vote. So they'll have to be like, oh, okay then. So Jeremy and Kelly, you're both immune. Whoever's got immunity, you're immune. And whether there be, you know, three or two people outside of that, you have to vote for one of them. So I'm guessing... Exactly. Yeah. And my, my, I mean, I put it out there. I, you mentioned the final four. I've just put that out there as a prediction just for the sake of there's a slim chance of it happening. I don't necessarily want it to happen, but I'm just like, eh, let's see a final four. Why not? They've done it with the Amazing Race, yeah. I think, the last couple of seasons, so why not this time? <laughs> Exactly, exactly. We'll mix it up. Yeah, exactly. Now, uh, we've got a few listening questions. Thanks to people who sent these in. Um, now, one of our long-term listeners, Zachary Chong. Now, Denise, I, I generally avoid asking his question because he always asks the same question to every person because we, di- we did a rankings at the start of this season where we basically we sat down and we ranked every single contestant in the history of Survivor. It took us like 30-odd hours and there was 420 of you. Yeah, we have no life. Um, but <laughs> basically, Zachary oh always likes to ask uh, each of our guests what they felt about their position. And I generally don't ask it, but I-, I wanted to ask yours because you came in at 15th overall out of 400 and I think 42 survivors. So Zachary Holy wants to know, how do you feel about being ranked 15th? On our list uh incredibly honored because when you think of that list of how many great players are on there you know i've got one big piece to my name you know and that's i think how i get that ranking and that's about you know you know having gone to every tribal council so it's an incredible honor so obviously you know i think there are so many you know incredible players in the game and and to be ranked in 
in you know number fifteen out of all of them. Um, yeah, pretty amazing and pretty humbling. Well, I, I will let you know you you had only winners obviously ahead of you and. Um, a couple of the ones that you beat out in terms of former winners, you beat out Danny, you beat out Aris, Vesepia, uh, both the Natalies, you beat out Cochran, Tyson, Ethan, Jenna Maraska, Bob what? Crowley. Oh so, gosh. yeah, there's a few there that yeah, you beat out. that's pretty hard to believe. That's, <laughs> wow, thank you. That's that's pretty hard to believe, and, and you know, I think we're, uh, yeah, hard to believe, and, and I think, you know, you could look at so many different ways, and you could you could bump somebody else easily ahead of me. Um, you know, it's, yeah. It's it's an honor, so thank you very much. Not a problem. It's a, it's a very difficult task, too. I think people think it's quite easy to sit there and just put people up and rank them, but um, we fought a lot, and, um, yeah, if you've ever got to spare 30-odd hours, Denise, which I'm sure you don't, but uh, feel free to listen to it. Um, <laughs> I'll have to go back. I definitely will. Yes. Um, Ori Kohav. Now, Ori says, what's your opinion on Abby insulting Malcolm's hairstyle when she voted Joe <laughs> out? <laughs> I don't know that she's insulting Malcolm's hairstyle. I think she's definitely just insulting Joe. <laughs> Um, Joe's just a clean version of Malcolm, you know, so I think, you know, it's, it, 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 that's Abby, you know, she's, she's, she's always got a little fire in her and digging, you know, it's no different than her Colin Stephen poopy pants and, <laughs> you know, it's, it's whatever the moment, what, whatever moves her. So no, I, I don't, I think she was definitely just insulting Joe. So. Well, on that, actually, uh, Dan So Cool asked a similar question. How much greater is Malcolm Freeberg than that wannabe Joe? You see, I don't think it's a wannabe. They're just different. You know, I only, you know, I've never met Joe. I like Joe as a player. I've never met him. I'm, I have no doubt he's a, a great guy. Um, Malcolm and I, our personalities are probably just a little bit more similar. I'm a little bit rough around the edges. I think Malcolm's a little rough around the edges at times. Um, you know, Malcolm and I, it's, it, I have, there's parts of me that are kind of a female version of, of him um, in kind of how our outlooks on life. So, no, I think he's just a dirtier, grungier uh, version of Joe. Um, but I, I like Malcolm 1.0. <laughs> Malcolm 1.0. Um, Johnny Acosta, uh, Denise, are you surprised that Abby made it as far as she did? Not at all. Definitely not at all. I Because had she not refined herself a little bit, and she did. People don't believe it. They think, ah, she's the same. She did, I think, really try to focus on... Um, being a little bit calmer, um, being a little bit less volatile. We saw pockets of that when when things get difficult. A little bit more of that comes out for her. Um, but you know, she did she did significantly better, and so she didn't create as much drama. Um, she did initially with bracelet gate and all of that, um, but she didn't create the same amount of drama that we saw in the merge. You know, once she was in in the merge, try you know, and and when I experienced it. So, no, and then, start pe- again, people start thinking she's the perfect person to take to the end if you can maneuver it. So doesn't surprise me at all. There you go. Thanks, Johnny. Now, the last one I'll ask you, this is a good question. Uh, one of our long-term listeners, Catherine Kaneen. Now, Catherine says, uh, in a tribe like Matt Singh that just keeps losing, how do you keep your name from being brought up as a possible boot? Jeremy, like you, has managed to not have his name brought up as a threat, yet has managed to build a good resume. How do you strike that balance? You know, I can only speak to, like she said, you know, in with Matt saying, you know, losing, the way you keep yourself, you know, from having your name on the block is you become a value. When a tribe's that small, um, you have to be bringing some value to the tribe, and you have to be giving them a, a good enough reason not to vote you out, not to have your target. So, in, in and again, if, in the Philippines, you know, Zane put himself on the block, and then it was, great, it's not us. So perfect. You know, then we had, you know, Roxy, you know, Roxy, you know, Roxy and and then Angie, you know, in terms of strengths and challenges, we started viewing them as weak. Um, You know, Roxy wasn't eating. Roxy was getting weak. Um, Angie, the same thing. You know, it's it's, and Angie, you know, you look at also quite honestly in in a tribe that small, we were kind of looking at who can you not, I don't want to say manipulate, but it is. It's a little bit who can you manipulate and who can you maneuver um, easier. And again, so it was Angie. So you're looking at, you know, always just figuring out different ways, again, to keep that target off of you. And those are some of the ways. So being good at challenges, being good socially, um, yeah, and picking a good alliance. 
There you go. If I make it onto Australian Survivor next year, Denise, I'll remember that. I'll I'll keep that in the back of my ah. mind. So um, yeah, we get it's great. We're getting a local version, so we're all excited. We can actually apply to be on Survivor. So you know, <laughs> we can. Awesome. I heard I heard about that. That's awesome. Yeah, first first time in thirteen years they've done one. So hopefully it won't be as rubbish as the oh first God. time they did it. So anyway, thank. And when are they starting? That? Um, oh, nope. It starts, they film it, I think, in about May, and it airs sort of September next year. So it's still, they're just casting at the moment, but... Um, oh, very cool. Yeah. Whether I make it, I'm not going to make it, I know that, but I'll just still be able to watch it and cover it, and you'll be able to watch the Australian version and see how we play Survivor, so... Awesome. <laughs> Sounds great. There you go. Now, uh, thanks everyone for setting these in. Denise, we uh, wrap up every recap with... Uh, Again, five questions like we do in interviews, but these are obviously based on this season. Now, some would say you have the easiest week to answer these questions. You know, you're not here in week one Good. having to try and make predictions, but I think you've probably got the most difficult finale to predict. So, um, whilst it might be easy to some, I'm going to say not that easy. I'm going to start off right now. Mm. Denise Stapley, who is your tip to win Survivor Cambodia? See, you're right. It, it's easy, but it's not. Oh, can I give two picks? Please. Well, there's a, I mean, there's a dark horse question afterwards, I, I guess. But, oh, you can give me two okay. and we can we can revisit that. Go for it. You know, I think, again, because we don't know who's going to be sitting because everything's still moving. But I think, you know, quite honestly, I think it's going to be either, I, th- I think, Wentworth or Spencer. Those are my two number one picks to win. Done. All right. On that, who's your dark horse to win? You know, quite honestly... Keith. Oh, that would be so I good. I know, that sounds ridiculous. <laughs> but I think Keith, if he gets to the end and can have an intelligent conversation, <laughs> um, I think because he, again, depending on who's sitting there, yeah, you know, I may have to take that back. He probably has no chance, but I would love to see it. I don't know. There's you, a part of me that would love to You've got to put it out there because, you know, that one chance that he does win it, Denise, you're going to look like a genius, so... <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, and I know people probably go, she's crazy. What is she talking about? But I, I think I, he, he's grown on me so much. So I like Keith. Oh, that would be, that would be epic. I'd love to see that. It'd be hilarious. It yeah, would be. it'd be interesting. Uh, who do you think is going to be next to go? Who will be the first person voted out in the episode? Uh, let's see. I'm looking here. Let's see. We've got Jeremy, Spencer, Tasha, Kimmy, Keith, and Wentworth, right? Mm-hmm. I think, you know, if, well, if, if Wentworth doesn't win immunity, I think she could go, but I think, again, she's going to be smart enough to play her idol. Um, Jeremy, same thing. If he doesn't win immunity and catches um, wind, so he's got that idol. So, you know, I think, ooh, I think it, sadly here because I put him as my pick to win. I think it could be Spencer. Mm-hmm. Spencer or Tasha, one of the two. Spencer or Tasha. I don't think Kimmy's at risk of going home. I'd like that. And I don't think he does either. Yep. It's interesting. I bring this statistic up all the time here, Denise, because I, I feel we're the show that discovered it. No one else talks about it. But Australian Outback, every time they have a returning player from their season come back, they make it, at least one of them, I should say, makes it to the final four. Now, if Kimmy doesn't make oh. it to the final four, we can still say they at least make it to the final episode. But if you, you know, obviously Australian Outback, Amber one, Heroes Villains, Jerry fourth, scooping in your season, finished as what, co-runner-up, and Tina on wow. Blood vs. Water, she came in fourth. So, Kimmy's That's got this opportunity cool to do it. Yeah. I mean, obviously, returning players from I that didn't season. Know that. Yeah. There you go. So, know that if, cool. you're, if so, you're ever on a season with her back again, say, all winners, and you're up against Tina again, you, you maybe not want to let her get past a few first few votes. <laughs> exactly. Man. There's a, I didn't even, I, that's a cool fact. So. There's that danger. Now, you sort of alluded to this before. Um, we ask kind of from your season, who do you think most deserves a second chance that already hasn't gotten one? And obviously you aren't allowed to vote for yourself, but you wouldn't be eligible anyway because you won the season, of course. So right. would, you, would you put Jeff or Zane in that category? I would. I would. I actually, Jeff, I think it, if we look at deserving and kind of that rounded player that I really like out there, I would definitely love to see Jeff, you know, back. I don't know if he would or not, um, but no, definitely. I liked um, I liked the way that he played in the game, and I'd love to see him get a second chance. I'd like to see that. I actually like Jeff on a rewatch. Uh, not too much on the first time, but he grew on me, I think, when I sort of rewatched yeah. it again. Um, exactly. Final question for you here. Denise Stapley, out of all the players this season, doesn't have to be the ones who are left. It can be ones who have already gone out in this game. Who do you feel has played a most similar game to how you played on Philippines? You know, it's funny. The one that I identify is the same one that Abby identifies, which would probably be Wigglesworth, Mm -hmm. to be honest. 
I think in partially in just personality she has. I think we, we saw kind of maybe a little bit more of a quietness to her. We didn't see a lot of vocal strategy, but, you know, she's working. Um, we know she's giving it her all at challenges. So I think maybe her philosophy in the game also of I just need to be here. I need to be I needed to be in it to win it, and I just need three more days to maneuver. You know, you know, each vote is a step. So I probably would identify a little bit um, with Wigglesworth, actually. Perfect. I like it. And it's been a lot of fun here, Denise. I'm glad we've been able to do this. This has been great to have you back on the show. So we really appreciate your time. Enjoy the finale. Uh, enjoy, your, enjoy your night tonight as well. And um, please, thank you very much for coming back here on the show. It's been a lot of fun. Hey, always a pleasure, Ben. Thank you so much, and thanks for managing the schedules here so i'm off for my date night so have a great night there too there we go denise stapley winner of survivor philippines back on the show great pleasure to have her on always a great uh time speaking to her and always uh great opinions there as well so we uh thank denise once again and uh looking ahead folks this is it survivor cambodia is about to come to a close in only a few more days and uh it's it's so hard to believe it's Six months ago, we were voting these people on the season and having special episodes, talking about who we want to see and doing all the pre-interviews and all this sort of stuff, getting excited. Now here we are, this time in in one week, we'll know who the winner is. So one of these six is going to be joining the Survivor Winners Club. So uh, amazing to think that. We will uh, be having a slightly different week in a way because if you didn't see our posts on social media, on Twitter and Facebook, if you are an Australian listener to our show and haven't heard the news, the fantastic thing that uh, goes, the channel, of course, that Show Survivor is doing this week is they are showing the finale at the same time as the US. So it is completely live with the US. If you stay home on Thursday, Australian time, to watch the finale, and perhaps you've had to stream it on the internet to kind of watch it at the same time as the US to avoid spoilers, you do not have to do that because Go will be showing the finale and the reunion from 12 o'clock midday on Thursday, which is exactly the same time as it will be shown in the US. So massive props to Go, to Channel 9, fantastic work that they've done there. They've really jumped on board with Survivor fans in the last couple of years to kind of fast track and only show it a couple of hours after it is shown uh, in the US. And now to actually do this is just absolutely fantastic. So uh, massive props to go. But uh, what we will be doing then uh, as kind of a bit of a change up uh, with our Oz Topsy. Now, generally, we do our Oz Topsies live after the Australian airing. So, of course, it is still being shown at 7.30 p.m. on go as per usual. So it will finish uh, at about 10.30 with the reunion. So obviously, generally, we would go to air at 10.30 with our Oz Topsy. We're going to change it up just because because Go has done it just because it's been shown live differently. We're going to change it up and we're going to go live after the finale, the exact time it ends in the US and the exact time it ends here in Australia. So we will be going live just after 3 p.m. on Thursday. Now, that doesn't mean that you still can't listen to the Oz Tops. Of course, it is always put up for you to download, so you'll be able to download it uh, if you're watching the Australian version a little later on. But we're just going to try it up, get a, maybe a few more American people who aren't watching the Know It Alls to kind of come across and uh, tune in to us instead. So, um, yeah, we'll be putting more details out during the week. And uh, we would love for you to join us. If you've never joined us for a live Oz Topsy before, um, maybe because it's a bit too early, if you do live in the States or Canada, this is your opportunity to do that. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Other big news this week that we are doing, we've uh, already put it up, of course. Uh, Deb Eaton, uh, first boot from the Australian Outback and uh, very, very excited to be chatting to her this week. Stay tuned to our site. We'll let you know uh, should there be any changes to that. But as of right now, it looks to be happening Wednesday morning Australian time. So we will strive to get it up uh, later that day as well. So um, get excited, folks. Deb Eaton. Get your questions in as well if you haven't done that. Our, our finale recap, as of right now, as of the time of recording this, uh, it's going to be back-to-back winners. And the first time we've had this person on in quite some time, Todd Herzog, winner of Survivor China. It looks like he's lined up for our finale recap. Uh, again, look out for our uh, social media posts to confirm this. But we'll be very, very excited to bring Todd. So we would have bookend this season with two fantastic winners, two winners that are in my top five, Todd and Brian. So there you go. I'm just being selfish and getting uh, my favourites on the show. But, of course, we know that you love them as well. Very insightful people to talk to Survivor about. SurvivorOz.com. Head there. Uh, Twitter. Follow us there. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube. And remember to subscribe to us on iTunes. Get these straight to your device. Rate us on iTunes. 
iTunes. And if you don't have iTunes and you do listen to us through other podcast services, remember you can like us and subscribe us on theirs too. We always appreciate feedback. We read all our comments. We read all our tweets. read all our messages. Try to respond to them where we can, and we do appreciate all your support and feedback. Thank you very much. We'll be back next week to wrap it all up. Survivor Cambodia. Enjoy finale week, folks, and we will speak to you in a few days on The Trains. Oh,